summer, I was a part of the Blue Marble Space Institute of Sciences Young Scientist Program, working with Dr. Henderson Cleaves on a project focused on classifying carbonaceous chondrites using machine learning. So, what are carbonaceous chondrites? They are a type of primitive meteorite with high carbon content formed in protoplanetary disks and representing some of the oldest minerals in our solar system. These meteorites offer crucial insights into the origins of the solar system and life itself. Our project used FTICR mass spectrometry to analyze the complex organic matter in 24 meteorite samples. Mass spectrometry helps identify different compounds by turning molecules into charged particles, which are then analyzed based on their unique mass to charge ratios. We employed various plots to interpret the data. The first one, which plots the mass to charge ratio and the signal intensity, helps identify the unique species which appear as peaks at the particular mass to charge ratio values. The second type of plot compares the relative abundance of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur to the mass to charge ratio by which we can glean information about the distribution of the atoms and the different molecular compounds they are present in. Comparing the double bond equivalent or DBE with the number of carbon atoms tells us about the size of the molecules as well as the degree of unsaturation present. Thus, DBE is zero for unsaturated compounds and increases as the molecules become increasingly unsaturated. Kendrick mass defect plots are used to identify homologous compounds that differ by CH2 units, as ions of the same family show up as a horizontal line, meaning that the composition of one ion is determined, the compositions of other ions within the family can be deduced. A slope in the plot represents functional groups that contribute to the overall molecular mass but are not a part of the CH2 unit. Kendrick mass analysis is used along with Van Crevelin diagrams, which plot the atomic ratio of hydrogen and carbon and oxygen and carbon as functions of each other. These represent the degree of saturation and the degree of oxidation respectively, and can help in assessing the origin and the maturity of the compounds by graphically representing the degradation of the organic material over time. On the other hand, 3D Van Crevelin diagrams also include the atomic ratio of nitrogen and carbon or sulfur and carbon. When diagrams were also plotted to reflect the similarity of the processing history of the organic compounds. Since there was a large number of samples, the when diagrams were plotted as heat maps to accommodate the large volume of information being depicted. Lastly, mass difference network plots use the mass values as nodes of the network and are connected at the edges, which signify the mass differences. Thus, these plots tell us about the relationships between different molecular species using their mass differences as a point of comparison, giving us vital information about the type of chemical transformations involved. To assess relationships between the samples, we use P principal component analysis, or PCA, which simplifies the data set while retaining vital information. The PCA plot shows correlations between sample groups and hierarchical clustering dendrograms further organize the data into clusters, making it easier to interpret similarities among the samples. In summary, this summer, I learned that carbonaceous chondrites are rich in complex organic matter and they offer key insights into the early solar system and the origins of life. Using FTICRMS and machine learning, we can analyze and identify unique organic compounds, shedding light on the evolution of life's building blocks, bringing us one step closer to answering questions about the origins of life.